A year into the historic COVID-19 pandemic, epidemiologists warn that many Americans simply aren't taking the precautions they ought to, while others are deferring needed medical care out of fear of infection. These facts, combined with cooler weather and winter gatherings, are driving U.S. pandemic fatalities to one record high after another and driving hospital systems to the breaking point. In this video, how masks actually work, managing risk, and a simple way to reduce your exposure during that overdue trip to the dentist. A common excuse among the anti-mask crowd is based on a fundamental misunderstanding of how masks work. Most people think of a mask like a kitchen strainer, which must have holes small enough to block the passage of whatever needs filtering out. Thinking this way, some people hear that viruses are smaller than the pores in a mask and conclude it's all a communist conspiracy to control them. This only proves the proverb, a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. Masks work like sieves only for large particles like sawdust, smoke, and sand. Nanoparticles like viruses behave very differently. Particles like these are not in solution in the air and are too small to be easily swept along by it around obstructions in their path. Think of a forest. You'd have no trouble hiking through even a dense thicket of trees, but strap a rocket to a dirt bike and try it at 200 miles per hour and you're going to die. Similarly, a mylar balloon might drift along through miles of such forest and never get caught but hit a golf ball into the same woods and you'd better duck. It very well may bounce back and beam. Filter masks are more forest than kitchen strainer. A virus particle may be small enough to squeeze between the fibers, but from its perspective, your breath is a hurricane gale. A few layers of random fibers are like a nearly impenetrable net. This is why studies over the last few years have shown that surgical masks are as effective as N95 respirators for protection against the flu, and that even DIY masks can be highly effective against respiratory viruses when made with multiple layers of paper shop towels or tightly woven materials like quilting fabric. Masks do not need virus-sized pores to stop virus-sized particles. In fact, far from the simple concept most people have in mind, Modern masks are made of materials carefully chosen and modified to balance different properties to achieve the best fit to purpose. Most start with a non-woven polymer fabric formed using a spun melt process similar to how cotton candy is made. The resulting material is pressed into a thicket of random fibers with large pores that reduce breathing resistance. Often the fibers are made with an electro spinning or other process that leaves them with an electric charge attractive to passing particles. This basic material is then bonded and treated to make several different types of fabric, which can be assembled to make different types of masks. Surgical masks have a tough, water-resistant outer layer intended to protect the wearer from splattering a surgical environment. A soft inner layer meant to wick away sweat and usually three inner layers of fluffy filter material that provide most of the filtration. Surgical style masks vary in quality and thickness, but all have a fundamental limitation. The thicker the filter material, the more prone it is to getting sucked against the face, collapsing and reducing the surface area to which air can flow and increasing breathing resistance. This is why masks offering better filtration, N95 and better in the US and KN90 or better in China, are typically made of multiple layers bonded and molded into a rigid or peaked cup that offers mechanical support to prevent them from collapsing, and the best masks typically move the filtration into a removable cartridge installed on a rigid plastic frame. These designs can be more comfortable and durable, but they're mostly to provide support for the filter material during heavy respiration or when partially clogged. Masks protect you in three basic ways. First, they protect doctors from bodily fluids and the rest of us from grubby, virus-contaminated fingers. Second, 
Like a sieve, they filter out large particles like dust and aerosolized droplets of water that might be contaminated with virus. Third, like our forests, they collect virus particles like stormtroopers competing for the Darwin Award. And finally, when worn by enough people, they slow the spread of the virus and lessen the load on the medical centers we all rely on. And that's important. CDC data shows that in both COVID-19 peaks during 2020, there were also peaks in non-COVID-related deaths above the normally expected level. This is believed to be in part due to people avoiding or delaying needed medical care out of fear of catching COVID. While this is understandable, Experts remind us that non-elective and maintenance care can be life-saving, and risks can be greatly mitigated by use of masks, goggles, and good hygiene. But what about trips to the dentist? How can you wear a mask with your mouth open? It turns out you can, and with a simple modification, anyone can turn a surgical mask into a nose mask. Is it worth it? Well, remember, the amount of virus particles you're exposed to matters, affecting not only your risk of falling ill, but how severe any illness is likely to be. We know that SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, can infect most of the tissues in the body, but the primary mode of infection appears to be inhalation, with contact with the eyes being a distant second. So assume you have a surgical mask that's 92% effective, but you wear it only over your nose. If 80% of the risk is from infection by inhalation, that's still 74% effective. That's a lot better than nothing. And if you also wear goggles and use a dentist who takes appropriate steps against the virus, isn't that better than letting a neglected tooth become infected, an old filling start to fail, or diseased gums leach bacteria into your bloodstream, perhaps contributing to heart disease? Of course it is. So how do you make a nose mask? Easy. Just take a standard surgical mask and fold over the bottom third. Then, first on one end, then the other, gather one fold width toward the center and staple it. Then repeat with the other. Make sure all the staples face the outside of the mask so they don't cut you. That's it. Put it on like normal and shape the bridge clip to your nose. It will feel a little weird resting on your lip, and you'll want to minimize talking, as the mask won't help if you inhale through your mouth. Will it stop you from getting sick? There's no way to know, but it will definitely lower your exposure risk, and every little bit helps. And by the way, those people who can't seem to keep their nose in its holster, if you walk around with your nose hanging out, a mask with 92% effectiveness drops to only 18%, about as good as a paper shop towel. So don't be that guy. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of the science goodness. And if you want more of my science and science fiction, you can support my writing on patreon.com or buy my sci-themed merchandise at teespring.com. You can also find me on amazon and audible.com. Let's not spit at the camera. Oh, God. Don't rewrite the script while you're reading it. The likelihood that you'll fall ill, but how likely any illness is... Uh... Why are you doing this to me?